Disability haunts our contemporary orientation to embodiment, so much so that it is a risk that we must continually guard against. The specter of disability is also spectral. Its gradations provoke anxieties about a past that threaten to taint or even become the future. Trauma, toxic exposure, historical and interpersonal violence and oppression. These experiences mark bodies of the past and haunt futures yet to come. And yet, can a disability haunting enable us to grapple with the effects of the past and the present in such a way that provokes a different, more collectively just future? Can we know and experience disability differently and can spectrums of risk provoke the possibility of disability justice? In this article, we draw on legacies of eugenics and the institutional history of the sperm bank to consider how spectrums of risk constrain and expand possibilities for disability justice. We do this by examining the discourses surrounding the case of Zytex sperm donor 9623, which caught our attention back in 2016. He was described as the perfect donor, an IQ of 160, spoke four languages, was a talented musician. Yet seven years after the birth of their child, a Canadian couple discovered that donor 9623 had a criminal record, a diagnosis of schizophrenia. We trace how the parents, haunted by the dread of disability, marked the fate of their donor-conceived child on a graded spectrum of genetic and psychiatric risk. The gradations of risk here are speculative and individualized. Treatment is customizable and surveillance perpetual by necessity. Through this case, we seek to better understand how disability is being reorganized as risk is mapped onto a spectrum. Whether emanating from the realm of biomedical diagnosis, popular culture, critical scholarship, or activism, the trouble with the spectral lies in the ways in which it upholds disability, or a more severe or more intense form of disability, as an object of dread. This orientation, we argue, obscures the relational possibility of disability risk and also fails to substantially alter material, social, or structural inequalities toward disability justice. We end the article by exploring the possibility of the spectrum of disability, which we argue lies in the ways in which it exposes an inherent relationality and interdependency between bodies and their social and physical environments. The notion of a relational and responsive disability spectrum promises that we can together make a world that can embrace variegations of embodied difference, such that confronting the biosocial limits of ourselves is met with collective commitments to creating infrastructures of access, care, and supports for flourishing. Embracing disability and disability culture enables us to offer both the disability to come and the disability already here something more than dread, monitoring, intervention, and individual overcoming, foregrounding new possibilities for building more accessible futures and improving the life chances of historically oppressed people.